Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're peeling back the curtain on a less talked about aspect of the music industry. The dark side of rappers. While the glitz and glamour often take center stage, it's important to remember that there's more than meets the eye. So, if you're ready to delve into the realities that often lurk in the shadows of fame and fortune, then you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Throughout the 1980s and early 90 seconds, the influence of MCs like Curtis Blow, Ron DMC, and the Beastie Boys led to a rising trend of urban youth purchasing pricey brand name clothing and sneakers, an image largely portrayed throughout today's hip-hop culture. Unfortunately, such trends have only further increased the financial strain on many low-income families. With hopes of escaping similar hardship, Today's aspiring young rappers continue to be enticed by the fabulously glamorous lives of today's rap icons. For up-and-coming hip-hop artists, the considerable allure of fame and fortune often overshadows the grim reality of financial hardship commonly faced in the industry. As a result of this glamorization, many rappers feel they must spend a lot of money in order to maintain their luxurious lifestyles. High-rolling superstars like Jay-Z, Hididi and 50 Cent have become symbols of hip-hop excess, attaining a level of wealth and success that is often fantasized by younger rappers. Lifestyles of the rich and famous are also routinely glamorized in rap music videos, featuring expensive cars, mansions, pools, and an endless supply of beautiful women. While the dream of obtaining such status is shared by many, the reality is that only an elite few will ever make enough money to afford this type of lifestyle. In contrast to the popular image of rappers frivolously and irresponsibly spending money as several who are both economically and fiscally responsible. Although one of the most controversial figures in rap history, Russell Simmons has been a pioneering example of a financially responsible rapper. Simmons presided over the strategic business decisions of his company Def Jam Records to gradually build a mogul. Simmons then parlayed his profits to venture into various fields including fashion design, film, TV production, and even finance. Jay-Z famously retired the chains and flashy suits he grew up on to defy his style by the expensive European minimalism of the Mason Martin Margiela label. Jay-Z and Simmons are the polar opposite of the rappers who have excessively spent and increased their wealth by illegal means. These men have a clear desire to be financially responsible and positively impact the status of African Americans by promoting intelligence and hard work. The luxury rappers boast about is in reality a series of status games in which they must compete against other rappers. Maintaining a steady cash flow is no easy task, as market trends in rap are unpredictable. An unfortunate byproduct of this competition has been the increasing number of rappers declaring bankruptcy. It seems that image and reality have become so blurred that the illusion of wealth is worth the cost of true financial stability. Rappers believe that through the symbolism of material possession they can be an inspiration to their fans and a mentor to other aspiring rappers. These beliefs, however, have coercively led many rappers into irresponsibly squandering their money. But the reality of being a rapper is often far from the glamour that they rap about. Lyrics these days often speak of fast cars, jewelry, and women with mention to how the artist in question has the big bucks to be able to afford it all. Although this may be true in some cases, according to many stories of current and old school commercial artists, this can be very misleading. One example would be Eminem who is now a very successful artist but in his early days. He famously had to work 60 hours a week to afford to give his daughter lunch and a birthday present. More recently, young money label owner Badman came under fire for an unpaid $8 million loan for a 50,000-gallon pool. Sucker for Love rapper Snoop Dogg once said that the best day of his life was the day he bought a fridge for $1,000. It's only when you look at the one-time ghetto-stricken backgrounds of these three artists that you can laugh and cry at this materialistic irony. Being young and suddenly having access to large amounts of money, often with a deprived background, 
can sometimes also encourage a lack of financial responsibility. This can be further worsened with the appeal of street credibility. Many rappers feel the need to maintain an image of success, even when their pockets say otherwise. As a result of this, it is quite common for rappers to take out high-interest mortgages or extravagant loans on cars and jewelry that they cannot realistically afford, with many simply feeling embarrassed to not be able to keep up with their rapping peers. Celebrity financial advisor Suze Orman quite bluntly stated that many rappers are living paycheck to paycheck and that the average salary of a rapper would put them below the poverty line. During tough fiscal times, it is reported that many have bars repossessed and it is not uncommon for recording artists to file for bankruptcy in an effort to wipe the slate clean from numerous bad investments and impulsive spending. An extreme case of this would be that of rapper MC Hammer, who filed for bankruptcy in 1996 and soon thereafter compared his financial success to that of winning the lottery, only to end up in heavy debt as a result of a $30 million dollar a year lifestyle. The excessive money spent by rappers alone is enough evidence to prove that rap is a negative influence on society. In 1998, the estimated total revenue for the rap music industry was over $2.45 billion, and it is only increasing. It is believed that the foundation for a large percentage of rap music is promoting money, cars, drugs, and women. Videos tell the story. They show various rapper personas surrounded by an unnecessary entourage of people in a luxurious mansion, showing off vehicles that are outlandishly expensive with custom rims and paint jobs. And of course, there are always a handful of women dressed inappropriately. This happens to be a direct reflection of what has become the representation of success among many black men in impoverished communities. Unfortunately, this is where the negative impact begins. Inner city youth strive to emulate these images without the understanding of the hard work and dedication that these rappers put into achieving their status symbols. Still, the unemployment rate and the percentage of school dropouts among inner city youth is very high, and the legal job market is not looking very bright. These young individuals will do whatever it takes to achieve the fast cash, bling, and women that are portrayed as being a successful black man. The desperation of these individuals to achieve the bare minimum is astonishing. Oftentimes in today's society, even successful rappers can be considered a bare minimum. The flashy materialistic lifestyles seen in videos have caused misallocation of funds for many successful rappers. A very large percentage of the money made in the rap industry is spent on material goods such as cars and jewelry. There are countless reports on successful rappers defaulting on car and jewelry loans. Some rappers rent and lease vehicles trying to keep up images that are not consistent with their bank accounts. The popular slogan Bling Bling is another reflection of the misallocation of funds in the rap industry today. This phrase was coined by cash-stricken rapper Juvenile after seeing how much cash was spent on jewelry by successful rappers of his time. Purchasing extravagant jewelry has become a symbol of status. Many rappers are slaves to jewelry and numerous amounts of it. Successful rapper Jay-Z has had to be a defendant in countless court cases for failure to pay a jewelry supplier by the name of Raffaello and Co. Jay-Z's unpaid bill totals over half a million dollars. A few months ago, media reports of rap music's current forefront icon 50 Cent sleeping in his car swept the nation. Outrageous spending and often giving away money to promote a false image of generosity is the cause for this misguided financial status. Inner city youth do not understand this. They see rappers and their wealth as a means of escaping financial struggle. More often than not, they are attempting to escape financial struggle through illegitimate means. A rapper's progression to success is too distant for many to understand that it takes more than just the snap of the fingers. Snoop Dogg enjoys marijuana on a daily basis and has also been involved with cocaine. In an interview with Barbara Walters, he stated that it makes me feel the way I need to feel. He has been arrested multiple times for possession of the drug. DMX has a long history of battling with drug addiction. He has been in and out of penal institutions and has had multiple run-ins with the law. Eminem became addicted to prescription drugs, which nearly resulted in an untimely death. Hip-hop mogul Russell Simmons has even expressed his addiction to smoking marijuana. These are just a few examples of the massive drug culture within rap music. 
Many fans argue that it is now a societal norm for an artist to use drugs if a fan listens to artist music and idolizes the lifestyle which they lead. The fan may also think the intake of drugs will make them feel the same way their favorite artist does. Many fans argue that it is a societal norm for an artist to use drugs. If fans listen to the artist's music and idolize their lifestyle, the fan may also think intake of drugs will make them feel the same way their favorite artist does. This could be very detrimental in the long run, as many fans do not have the same financial or emotional support as some of their favorite rappers. They may take up the use of drugs and, unlike the artist, not be able to stop due to addiction. This could eventually lead to an increase of substance abuse problems within poverty and inner city. Dan affiliations. Quite a few of the rappers in the industry have been or are currently affiliated with gangs, but one of the most notable artists to be in a gang is Snoop Dogg. Snoop is a member of the Rolling 20 Crips in Long Beach, although he hasn't exactly denied it. He hasn't been quite open about it either. The reason why it is said is because he is related to two known Rolling 20 Crips members, Daz Dillinger and Nate Dogg. Another rapper from the 90s, Sibo, is a member of the gang known as Till Lindemans. This rapper, however, has had an extensive violent past and has spoken about it in his lyrics. He also did an interview with Don Diva magazine where he spoke candidly about his gang involvement and the pitfalls of that lifestyle. His interview would eventually get him shot by a rival gang member at a movie studio in Sacramento, but the bullet only grazed him. Gangster rapper CJ Mack was a leader of the Queen Street Bloods and got involved with drug dealing. During that time, he hired a hitman to murder a rival gang member. The hitman wasn't successful in the murder, but he did end up killing the rival's girlfriend instead. This is just one way these rappers have been tied into violent crime. Now we can talk about the opposite, where a rapper was a gang member and later used music to escape that lifestyle. One of the greatest storytellers in rap and by far one of the smartest men to grace this industry is Cool G Rap. Known for his gritty and violent lyrics, Cool G was a member of the Five Point Street Gang and would even end up robbing a doo-wop show and shooting the promoter. G Rap would also shoot a rival over a drug deal gone bad, but rumors say that the man survived. Cool G has never spoken on these incidents. G Rap then joined friend DJ Polo, and the two would send their demo to Marley Mile and create the group called the Juice Crew in the mid 80 seconds. G Rap would meet the ancestors of his would be victims. I remember one time I was preparing to rob a drug dealer, G Rap said. I had the Mac in my coat and everything, and I ran into two brothers from this street that I was cool with. We just started talking and I never mentioned it to them, but I put it together that I can't be doing this shit, and I stayed away from them good brothers. G-Rap then said that this was the start of him realizing he needed to leave the street life alone, and Gin and Juice would be a song showing Snip's decision to go with the rap music as a way of life. G-Rap said he would go on to run into the same friends, but he would pretend not to know them, and they would commend him for leaving the street life behind. This may be the most positive transition because G-Rap eventually turned his life around completely. Many of the rappers in the music industry have a history with violence and crime. Most of the time listeners of the music aren't given a clear understanding of what these artists have done. They've just heard about a situation or an arrest and the media takes off with it. Well, this section will give you an in-depth look at what exactly these rappers have done. In the late 1980s, or early days, many respected and historic hip-hop legends organized hip-hop posses. What has become clearer in recent years is that hip-hop posses are not just about showcasing unity and displaying strength in numbers. Hip-hop posses often serve as recruiting pools for street gangs. Another reason for this is because there is a very thin line between establishing a street rep and a hip-hop rep. If a rap group already has a violent criminal history and have been rapping in the streets before trying to establish a hip-hop career, in their minds there would be no reason to change their image. Everything you have already seen, heard, or read about to this point would not only apply to that certain group, but that may be the answer you've been looking for about why sometimes it seems that rap crews will find themselves in a sticky situation for no apparent reason. Now let there be no confusion. Not all hip-hop posses are street gangs and there are many positive hip-hop posses out there. 
But once your crew starts finding themselves in trouble, becoming subject to violence or engaging in violent activity, it is inevitable that they have entered the first stage of gangster life. All it really takes from this point on is a well-respected out to give the youth in the crew a G-ride and identify themselves with a certain gang and just like that, the line between hip-hop posse and street gang has been crossed. Now speaking of G-rides and hip-hop, West Coast rap legend Tupac Shakur was a known member of the infamous Bloods gang and spoke about it often in his music. Death Row Records at the height of its era was easily the most notorious rap label to have even been associated with street gang activity and could be a whole different story by itself. Most rappers have big egos and lots of pride, thus when another artist offends them they are likely to retaliate in order to defend their honor. This often leads to beefs or feuds between two artists. In classic hip-hop form, some of these feuds can lead to behind-the-scenes conniving tactics and underhanded tricks. Many believe that the infamous East Coast vs West Coast hip-hop rivalry, which was purported between Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records, headed by Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur respectively, in the mid-90 seconds was responsible for the death of the two aforementioned rap legends. Some beefs are still ongoing and show no sign of stopping. Jay-Z and Nas have been involved in a feud for the best part of a decade. An altercation at the 1999 Hot 97 Summer Jam, where they both insulted each other in front of thousands of fans, further fueled the dispute. One notable event was when Jay-Z released The Takeover, a track insulting Nas and claiming that he was a better artist. Nas responded with Ether, a track in which he verbally abused Jay-Z despite numerous attempts to call a truce recently. The pair have been exchanging more insults and the future of the feud is uncertain. Even more attesting to the violent lifestyles of rappers, it is more common than not to find rappers behind bars. Recent years have seen an alarming number of rappers either being charged or serving time for a range of offenses, from drug violations to murder. It is not uncommon for a rapper to release their breakout album, only to be soon after incarcerated. Foxy Brown, Mystical, and C Murder are recent examples of this trend. At the current time, a little less than 10% of the 50 cover class of 7 is serving time in prison. How does this happen? Why are rappers so prone to run-ins with the law? The answer to this is multifaceted, but lies largely in the mindset of the individual and the circumstances they are surrounded by. Coming from the poor inner city, many rappers are no strangers to run-ins with the law having been harassed by police on minor charges one too many times. Oftentimes those rappers have had no prior interest in criminal activity, but in facing a corrupt justice system and the need for financial security, they find themselves becoming what authorities always accuse them of being. Others are products of broken homes and impoverished communities, raised with little guidance and dire influences to pursue a life of crime. With fame dangling alike at the end of a very dark tunnel, many continue to travel down that tunnel due to the ever-present and culturally acceptable use of drugs and alcohol. This leads to further poor decision-making and some outright criminal actions. In the case of romanticists like C. Mada, his court case and subsequent conviction for murder were the results of trying to uphold an image that he was no longer in a position to maintain and prove himself in an environment that he had long since left behind. Thus the consequences of his actions had dire effects on not only his life, but the lives of those he affected and the fans who admired him. There is a lot of glorification of guns and violence in the lyrics of rappers. Many rappers in their songs portray that they live in the ghetto and will always be loyal to it. They also claim to represent gangs without thinking of who's listening to their music. These individuals fail to realize that the gang's lifestyle is nothing beneficial and representing this in their music is nothing positive to do. All this does is lead astray the youth who listen to their music and forces them to think that it's okay to be involved in criminal activities. This was the case in the 1990s. A group who called themselves the Living Legends released a song entitled Rabbit Hole. This song was an attempt to educate young urban hip-hop listeners that gangs were not worth any further consideration. Some supporters of these gun-toting rappers will argue that they are just rapping about events they have witnessed in their past years living in poverty-afflicted areas. They view the rappers as merely messengers to a violent reality in a city of despair. 
But it is argued that by rapping about a problem with no intentions of resolving it can be viewed as implementing negative change. Dr. Ian Lopez, a Yale University professor of law, puts it this way. If the rapper is not making a social commentary and the discourse is in which he have to retaliate, that is the exact type of behavior which often results in cycles of violence. An example of this came in July 2003, when an East Coast rapper by the name of 50 Cent intentionally released a record character assassinating a man known as Ya Rule ending with the words Murder Inc. Have some crack. In response to this track, gunfire erupted outside the world-famous Hit Factory studio. Though 50 Cent denies having any involvement with the shooting, this is yet another case of life imitating art. Rappers come into wealth and fame and are able to achieve what the normal person cannot. While it is obviously a huge positive in their lives, it can also be a negative. Exploitation is an issue that many rap artists face and it can come in many forms. Whether it be a result of the music the rap artists created or by people in the industry taking advantage of them, it is something that can have a detrimental effect on their lives. An example of exploitation that is due to the genre of music comes in the form of Ludacris and his song Deep Covers for a Black Man. In this song, Ludacris discusses the issue of black-on-black -black crime and how he feels that it's an issue that doesn't get enough attention. However, Ludacris was forced to change the focus of the song and the message that he was trying to convey in order to sell more records because the people he had signed with felt that the song wouldn't do as well because it's not what people want to hear. This is a prime example of someone having to compromise their values and beliefs in an attempt to gain more money. Money wasn't an issue for 50 Cent, but even he felt that he was being exploited by the recording company that he was affiliated with and Dr. Dre and Interscope. 50 felt that he was being taken advantage of financially and had to file a lawsuit against the record labels. This is a common issue in the music industry with many artists, and 50 also made mentions of how acts of exploitation management and the music industry itself made him mad enough to write a song. Exploitation of rappers can sometimes be through actions and that can be seen with what happened to Proof. Finding a record deal and achieving fame is a dream for many aspiring artists trying to make it in the industry. Unfortunately, that dream becomes a nightmare for some. Coming from the group D12, Proof was often attempting to help members of his group and in 2006 he was shot and killed during a dispute involving money with a bouncer and a disbarred police officer. This is an extreme case but examples like this and others show how exploitation and wrongdoings can often befall rappers and the consequences can be severe. The lyrics in numerous rap songs contain a much amount of sexual degradation and misogyny. The objectification of women or the representation of women in a sexual manner is not isolated to gangster rap, but is a prevalent characteristic very throughout rap music. It is demonstrated repeatedly in videos in which women are viewed as sexual objects and not much more. In 1999, two sociologists studying popular music found that 68% of rap songs they had studied contained some sort of violent and or misogynistic lyrics. These researchers went on to say, it is likely that the extreme levels of misogyny and violence apparent in rap music may be detrimental to the learning and development of young black males. Moreover, this music, which glorifies the degrading of black women, murder, and an overblown, tasteless materialism, may immunize black youth to the real consequences of these social problems. This immunization can be taken to mean that the desensitization of these youths to their own cultural problems. As they become further exposed to these problems as adults, they are less affected or driven to affect the positive change. This is a theory and is hard to prove, but highly plausible. It is mentioned that black women are particularly vulnerable in society as a result of black males identifying with their own harassment and oppression from wider society with that of what they see in the media. This identifies a double jeopardy situation in which black women are always the losers. Similar results have been found in ethnographic studies conducted in New Haven, Connecticut by Hobson and Wick, who randomly selected a group of black males aged between 17 minutes 21. These studies concluded that exposure to hip-hop culture had led to many negative stereotypes in terms of black womanhood 
with the black males expressing less trust in black women and also less desire to form meaningful relationships with them. This growing trend was disturbingly apparent with the belief that black women were responsible for their own oppression and often deserved the extremely derogatory treatment that they were receiving from black males. Essentially, there was less respect for black women than ever. On a global scale, the consequences of abusive treatment towards women can be seen throughout war-torn and poverty-stricken countries, when women are often the prime targets of abuse and mistreatment. It is possible to draw an analogy that these women are the symbolic third world nations, desperate and largely without hope for social change. Cultural appropriation can be defined as the adopting of one culture by another, and then using elements of this culture in a new context, for example fashion, music and art. This is a process which has been happening for centuries. However, in recent years, cultural appropriation has been labeled as a form of colonialism in which it exploits and disrespects the oppressed culture. This is particularly relevant in the hip-hop industry. African-American people have been heavily oppressed throughout history, and hip-hop music has been a major outlet for the black community to express their feelings on this oppression. It is a way of telling their story, and is a genre closely intertwined with their culture. Over the past 20 years, hip-hop has become a major player in mainstream music and popular culture. And with this, it has seen an increasing number of white artists wanting to participate in the genre. This has resulted in a large number of white rappers adapting hip-hop culture as their own, often resulting in a caricature of the black community. A prime example of this is Vanilla Ice, a white rapper in the 1990s, who was ridiculed for his attempts to emulate traditionally black mannerisms and styles. This has then gone further with artists like Eminem and Iggy Azalea being accused of exploiting hip-hop culture for their own benefit. It has been said that Iggy Azalea in particular has used her adopted black scent as a tool for success, and both artists have been accused of perpetuating black stereotypes in their music. This has caused many to state that white rappers cannot participate in hip-hop music without being detrimental to the culture. Nevertheless, it is worth noting that not all people consider this as a negative. Seattle rapper Macklemore recently stated that it is possible for a white artist to participate in hip-hop culture without resulting in exploitation. He argues that for him and his colleague Ryan Lewis, it was a natural process to be influenced by hip-hop music growing up and both of them have drawn much positivity from the genre. This culminated in the duo's success at the Grammy Awards in 2014, winning Best Rap Album over popular African-American artists Kendrick Lamar, Drake and Kanye West. Macklemore later expressed that same album should have also won Best Album of the Year, however got robbed due to hip-hop music's overall stigma in popular music. Macklemore believes that this also shows hip-hop's far-reaching culture and that it is possible for a white artist to spread a positive message through the genre. He emphasizes that it is about bringing something to hip-hop music as opposed to taking, and that if a white artist is drawing only on negative aspects of the culture, then he is only taking something he cannot give back. This section will explore what is meant by cultural appropriation and how it relates to hip-hop music. It will look at the flipped ideology of imitation being a form of flattery and then show the negative aspect of copying being a process of stereotyping. This essay will look into why artists such as Eminem and Iggy Azalea are accused of cultural appropriation and then show the opposing side of the argument where Macklemore states that it is possible for a white artist to pay homage to African-American musicians without resulting in exploitation. Finally, this essay will look at further examples of cultural appropriation in hip-hop music in the form of white rappers using African-American black accents. Many tracks are no longer broadcasted due to the controversy of the lyrical content. Prept and Conan explained in a 2013 interview with This Is Max, a show on MTV Base, about their track Do It For The Gang which was banned from all radio stations. Loki, a rapper known for his politically charged and conscious lyrics, was a victim of censorship with his track Long Life Palestine which was banned from the air in 2009. With the introduction of the new explicit lyric censorship campaign on iTunes UK, which will see the display of parental advisory stickers on albums deemed explicit, there may be less of a platform for artists to release controversial music in the future. 
London rapper Jace, known for his intelligent, complex rhyming style, was banned from BBC One Extra for his controversial track High Grade PT2 which graphically details the life and consequences of a young cannabis smoker. Foreign beggars have been banned from radio with their track Let Go as the Drugs Act 2005 introduced a new criminal offense of possession of cannabis for the third time or more. This offense triggers a street warning consisting of information and advice and a cannabis warning. This legislation continues to evolve but the act and track have lost no relevance. The genre has always been riddled with stereotypes. The gangster culture that it portrays in music is also a real lifestyle for many rappers and might affect non gang affiliated artists. It's only been in the past few years that UK hip hop has been widely accepted and played on mainstream radio. Whether it's the watered-down radio-friendly tracks or the more gritty street tracks that are played on pirate radio or online stations, due to this recent acceptance, there are many artists and tracks that have been banned from play on radio. Let's talk about influence on youth and society. The violent behavior and actions seen in hip-hop and rap music videos have an influence on the youth. The presence of weapons, drugs, alcohol, and sexual activity seen in many videos can desensitize the viewer to these actions, just as violent and explicit video games have the same effect. It has been said that the anger and frustration found in rap music is a reflection of modern-day youth who are surrounded by negativity. But others argue that the glorification of low-income lifestyles, drug abuse, and gang culture has brought about an acceptance that this is how African-American culture should be. Fans of rap music have been known to mimic the actions of their favorite rappers, adopting their lifestyles and mannerisms. In an interview with ABC News, social activist Dr. Ben Chavez said that rap music has had a negative impact on race relations in America by reinforcing racial stereotypes. A recent study has found that the mental health of young people can be affected by the lyrics of their favorite artists. The study was conducted on Australian adolescents aged between 13 minutes 24 years. It tested whether different types of music lyrics had a positive or negative impact on the participants. It found that the more a genre of music was identified with youth culture, the more the participants believed that the messages in the songs had relevance to themselves. With hip-hop being a dominant culture in youth society, researchers warned against the increased risk of youth with depressive symptoms listening to music with negative messages in an attempt to empathize with the artist. Another aspect of this discussion is mental health and emotional struggles. The troubled past with regular legal issues and time spent behind bars, Ty, explains his issues with trying to find self-resolutions and keeping a level head for the sake of himself and loved ones. There were those times, Ty says, when I thought it would be better if I was just gone, doing time in jail. Just forget about it, erase the thought by just staying wasted, drinking, smoking. You know I must have had about five or six don't wake me up moments. Ideally, a humorous and effective way of addressing a serious topic, Ty. Amid suicidal thoughts with the temptation of avoidance through alcohol and excessive drug use. Oftentimes, a simple illusion of self-medication, but for some rappers, using their fame and use of drugs to aid out cries for help. The late DJ Screw, known for his rap and slowed flow style and a concoction of prescription cough syrup with codeine and other drugs, best known as Lino Syrup. Screw's use of the drugs believing it helped him work better, but he had been hospitalized on a few occasions due to excessive use and cardiac issues. Screw died of a codeine overdose and suffered heart failure in his home in November of 2000. An accidental death, but quite possibly a case of killing oneself through the attempt of escaping ongoing issues and papering over the cracks on much more complex problems. An interesting, but sad aspect of the life of a rapper is the mental strain it puts on them. Pressure from fans, record labels, family, and oneself can be too much to handle. Fame comes with a very expensive price tag and sometimes an unexpected one. 
an intrusion of privacy and high expectations from the public can make entertainers feel like they are being held as prisoners with the inability to give a command for release. The feeling of being caged and pushed for constant greatness, rappers often find themselves in a state of mind where they are required to set the world on their shoulders and sort out issues without the assistance of others. Commonly finding resolution through venting in their music causes more stress and ailments on the topic discussed. Ty, a successful Southern rapper and actor, is a perfect example of the pressure and stress that fame can put on an individual. To achieve popularity or fame as a rapper is a dream shared by many. However, when reality hits, it isn't all as satisfying as the image painted in the mind. One of the most problematic issues facing rappers in gaining fame is the intense pressure and stress fame in itself brings. This is due to expectations from all angles whether it is family, friends, record labels or fans. Essentially success in many rappers cases isn't defined by the money or the accolades, it is maintaining an image and persona. This continues to be the case even though many rappers would in their hearts want to evolve and progress their artistry. The intensity of pressure placed upon rappers has been related to levels experienced during university exams and considered destructive to mental health of an individual. This kind of pressure is not only self-inflicted but comes from the desires of wanting to move one's family from poverty and to live more comfortably than in one's childhood. An example of this is multi-platinum selling artist Nas describes the pressure of wanting to give his daughter everything she wants, how he feels he's underpaid, and is now in a worse off financial position than when he was young. He goes on to describe the disillusion he had with the industry and how the pressure affected his creativity. Feeling forced to make a radio-friendly song in a time where he was most low. This burden resulted in a song UBR, Unsatisfied Unfulfilled, the title a reflection of his emotions at the time. Furthermore, the pressure of success and maintaining a level of income has often led rappers to invest in gimmicks and various business propositions that they wouldn't have considered were they in a better state of mind and less pressured. This paper, I believe, is easily supported by the topic with plentiful examples and logical details throughout the text. The writers made sure to hit on all the possible points to further support the thesis, including an entire section dedicated to different mental disorders and struggles caught by rappers was a very intelligent idea. The stories were properly tied into the correct categories and had a clear explanation as to why they were supposed to be there, not to mention the array of rappers chosen and how well known they all were. The variety in rappers and the problems they face kept my interest throughout the paper and made me impressed by how all these events could be tied into negative sides of rap. All the cause and effects were easily identified and related back to their original source. From a small occurring event to a major life or career changing situation, it was clear that the writer had a strong understanding of different mental struggles and disorders. The one bothersome issue with the entire essay would have to be the many grammar mistakes spread throughout. Though they weren't majorly on so-called rookie mistakes, they were enough to the point where a reader could become confused. The other case would be in the last section where Tyler, the creator's story is broken up into pieces by different categories. If the writer was able to piece the story together, it most likely would have been the most compelling argument in the entire paper. Otherwise, this paper truly had very few, if any, mistakes, and the many strong points implemented into this text truly proved the thesis correct. Sugarfree and MC Act are both West Coast rappers who have also released tracks that graphically describe their attempts to take their lives. Act's highly controversial track entitled That Hood Still Got Me Under is the story of altercations with police and the public and an attempt to stage his own death. The track ends with Ike being talked out of taking his life by his daughter. These stories are just some examples of the tales of depression that are to be found amongst rappers today. Eminem and the Late Proof, two close friends in the late 90s rap battle scene, often spoke of their life struggles and relationships with drugs and low income in their attempts to make it as rappers. Over the years, Shady Records artist Eminem has released tracks that suggest thoughts of suicide and a letter entitled When I'm Gone which is a farewell to his daughters that could almost be suggestive of committing suicide. Eminem's close friend Proof was less discreet about his struggles. He once quoted, I died and came back. It's simple as that. 
In an interview before releasing a song describing the circumstances of his suicide attempts and how the discovery of his deceased cousin stopped him from following through with the act, an overwhelming product of documenting the stages of depression, anxious thoughts, and struggles is the development of suicidal thoughts. As disturbing and traumatizing as it sounds, the majority of your favorite rappers have publicly released songs and even interviews that suggest past or present thoughts of suicide. Unfortunately, some have taken it a step further and have attempted to take their own lives. And that brings us to the end of our exploration into the dark side of rappers. It's been a journey of discovery, shedding light on the often unseen aspects of the music industry. Remember, every story has multiple sides and understanding these complexities helps us appreciate the art even more. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more deep dives like this. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.